Good morning, everybody. It's actually Monday, but I'm doing Sunday's vlog so that I can post it today for Monday. You need to pray for my phone. This morning, the charger cord broke off inside of it, so as soon as I'm done with this, I'm headed to AT&T to see if they can get that little piece out of my phone because it's stuck up in there. Only me. Only me. But anyway, I want to do yesterday's vlog post. I didn't do it yesterday. I figured everybody was in church and everybody was posting uh, church things, so I figured I'd wait till today. So anyway, this is Sundays. Uh, let me see, maybe it is Sundays. Yeah, it is Sundays. So it's been a year and a half of us working on one bathroom in my house. Why? Well, two main issues were being gone and money. Then when work started downstairs last year, it was decided that the walls should come down. Once the walls were down, we found the wiring and the plumbing needed updating, actually needed, most of it needed replacing. The house is about 50 years old. Age and life creeps up on all of us. When this occurs, our souls need taken back to an altar where we allow God to fix us, updating our spiritual wiring and spiritual plumbing. Now let's look at the passage that we were studying yesterday. 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 5-7. through 7. And he ran unto Eli and said, Here am I, for thou callest me. And he said, I called not, lie down again. And he went and lay down. And the Lord called yet again Samuel, and Samuel rose and went to Eli. And said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And he answered, I called not my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. So here we see a few things. When God called him, called Samuel, he ran to Eli. When he got to Eli, he said, Here am I, you called me. Eli's response was, I didn't call you, go back to bed. Samuel did as he was told. Again, the Lord called him Samuel. Again, Eli, again, Samuel got up and went to Eli. Again, he told Eli, here I am, you did call me. Eli's response once again was, I didn't call you, go back to bed. Now, Samuel didn't yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. Why did I put three verses together today instead of just one? Because they're all alike and explain the same points again and again. You see, in our walks with God, we need to ensure we spend time in his word to understand the why behind the what. We have many people, young and old alike, who God is talking to. Most do not know what to do with what God is trying to tell them. Unfortunately for them, many in the church they look up to do not know how to direct them. They don't even recognize if they were not calling the person, perhaps God is trying to talk to them. Even the prophet Eli missed it the first two times as we see it in this passage. The new convert is coming, excuse me, I'm sorry, new converts are coming into the church rapidly. They don't have the benefit of the maturity in Christ like many of us. However, because we've allowed lethargy to enter into our spirits, we need a complete overhaul spiritually, just like my guest bathroom downstairs. Once the walls were tore out, we could see into the innermost part of the house, seeing the problems that needed fixed. We have lied to ourselves for far too long about the states of our own soul. This is all of us from the top down. We have hidden things from God in those innermost regions of our spirits, but during this time God has given us for consecration and sanctification before him, we must be honest, allowing him to rip out the walls of our soul. Then we must allow Jesus to replace bitterness, hatred, envy, unforgiveness, and so on with the fruits of his spirit. This will change us. So when those not yet mature are wise about the things of God, we will be able to give them proper direction. The last verse lets us know while Samuel was a little boy, the only reason he didn't recognize the voice of God immediately was because Samuel didn't yet know the Lord, nor had the word of the Lord been revealed to him. To go past the anointing to a place of the Shekinah glory of God, Eli knew well he had lost it. When Eli was nearing the end of his road, Samuel was just beginning. While the church collectively is nearing the end of the road, many new converts are just beginning. They will have to mature quickly with God-given wisdom to help others come to Jesus. While we, the church, move slowly and deliberately, asking God to truly consecrate and sanctify us through prayer in the Bible. Many will struggle with the following passage, Matthew chapter 20, verses 9 through 11. And when they came that were hired about the 11th hour, they received every man a penny. But when the first came, they supposed they should have received more. And they likewise received every man a penny. And when they had received it, they murmured against the good men of the house. This is the last days. For those of us who have been born in church or worked for God for many decades, we have to understand we will all receive the same pay. If we will all receive the same pay, is it not a stretch of the Bible to believe while we initially guide and train new converts, they will be granted wisdom, understanding, and revelation from God it took us years to attain. 
This is when and where if we are to be people going past the anointing into the Shekinah glory of God. We can allow no jealousy in our spirit. We must guard against thoughts of jealousy, bitterness, and unforgiveness towards others. Samuel was a child. He knew not God was calling him. He went to the one he trusted because he thought Eli was calling him. The new converts are going to come to us, but what kind of guidance are we going to give them? The first two times Eli probably thought this little boy's hearing things. He just needs to go back to sleep. Because of the lack of depth in a new convert's relationship with God, many things they will not understand. Because of a lack of recent depth with God and focus on our desires instead of God's, in the beginning we will not provide proper direction to them. Will we tell them this is nothing? Go back to bed. How do we change this? We get real with God. We quit making excuses for why we cannot, but we begin to live why we can. No more excuses not to pray. Read our Bibles or fast. In order to teach others how God speaks to us, we shouldn't have to go back in our memory banks, but we should be hearing from him on an almost daily basis. New converts do not have all the hang-ups we have when it comes to church. Did you hear that? New converts do not have all the hang-ups that we have when it comes to church. We have to move past this. The Bible teaches us in this passage, Samuel didn't know yet the Lord. Yet he didn't know him. Neither was the Lord of the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord revealed to him yet. Yet, meaning it's coming. It grieves my spirit when it's revealed to me some people very close to me have made decisions not to be close to God, but to rather live carnally. And these are people in the church now. We must remember the old saying, birds of a feather flock together. I still love them and long for their friendship, but I must choose Jesus to keep my spirit from becoming like theirs. When I pray, I must be open to whoever the Lord brings into my circle to influence towards the things of God. I will fail at this if I have not taken time to allow God to cleanse me, reworking the wiring and the plumbing of my soul. When God calls those coming in and they come to us thinking we have called them, will we immediately have the wisdom and knowledge to guide them? Or will we be like the prophet Eli, telling them to go back to bed? It is the last days. The harvest is ripe, but who will go? Who will train? Who will guide? Not just who will do these things, but who will do them properly aligned with the word of God and his spirit. I think it's time for us to pray. Jesus, I love you today and I thank you for your blessings, God. Lord, today I ask that you be with us, that you guide us, that you guide us closer to you, that you let us see that we're to become more like you and less like us, God, that you'll move on us, that you'll bring people to us, that we can quote Acts 2.38 to them. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And then we can prove to them that you are one. Deuteronomy 6 and 4, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And in the Ephesians, one Lord, one faith. My baptism. And then in the Acts, where we're to do everything in the name of Jesus. Now, God, today, I ask that you be with my friends, those suffering from COVID, Lord, that you walk into hospital rooms. My friend, Sister Darla, God, you be in that hospital room, Lord, today. You heal her body from head to toe, Lord. Raise her up, I ask. Be with her husband today, Lord. Watch over him. Watch over all the families and the people that I know that have COVID. Lord Jesus, as you will do, you be with them, Lord. You bring them through this. You walk with them through these valleys, Lord. You let them take that time as they lay there. Hopefully they have a mind that they can read your word and focus on you and pray. Lord, let them get closer to you through these times, I pray. Bring me closer to you through these times, Lord, I pray. Watch over me, Lord. Watch over this country, I pray, God. Be with us, Lord. We, we demand, Lord. No, we don't demand. We declare that you are the Lord of all and that every knee shall bow before you. And we declare that the evil has no power in this land, that you have all power, Jesus, and that you are going to win this war. In Jesus' name, we pray. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. We ask you to be with our missionaries overseas, Lord, today. We ask you to walk with them down the roads that they're on to give them comfort and peace, Lord, as they walk through valleys and as they walk through mountaintops that they're going, that you be with them and you give them guidance, that your spirit surrounds them, Lord, we pray. And we give you all the glory and all the praise for you're our King of kings and our Lord of lords. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.